Hello friends, today we will uh, discuss about emission inventories. You know uh, this air quality monitoring gives us idea about what is the status of air quality at a particular place. But if you want to know the air quality of a larger area, we cannot put instruments at each uh, you know corner or at each site. So, we have to do air quality modeling to learn about uh, you know air quality or air concentration at different points where air quality mo monitoring is not going to be uh, installed uh, or air quality monitoring equipments are not going to be installed. So, there we need air quality modeling. But for air quality modeling when we want to you know estimate air quality concentrations, ambient air concentrations, we need input data as emissions. So, the emissions are calculated and this emission inventory is developed before we do the air quality modeling. So, basically you can say that this emission inventory is the backbone of air quality modeling. If you do not have a good emission inventory, emissions inventory is nothing but estimation of emissions from different activities, different sectors and we you know combine the total emissions in a particular city or a particular industrial cluster or uh, you know country, even country level emissions are also reported to international agencies like if you want to control greenhouse gas emissions. So, every country has to report to a particular agency that this much of greenhouse gas emissions are occurring in our country. So, the emission inventory is developed regularly because emissions change year by year okay, due to technology change, due to land use and land planning change. So, there are several reasons why we need to have emission inventory at a periodical intervals. right? So, in today's lecture we will see what is the emission inventory, what is its importance, what is its role in air quality management okay, and how it is developed basic, what are the basic fundamental approaches uh, which we use for development of emission inventory and those basic equations which we use right. And then what are the activity data which are you know we consider for estimating emissions for each activity data. Then types of emission inventories because uh, several uh, researchers and several agencies have given uh, some sort of methodology for developing emission inventory. So, we will see different kinds of emission inventories which are available. Then guidelines and manuals of emission inventories which have been proposed by different agencies and the major sectors which contribute to emissions and the sector wise emission inventory we will see later on, but today it is only introductory lecture about emission inventory and its different aspects. So, when we talk about emission inventory, it is brief introduction then basically we talk about air quality management because this is one of the fundamental uh, you know aspect or component of the air quality management. In air quality management we need to monitor air, then we need to run some models because uh, at every you know corner we cannot uh, install instruments to measure the air quality. So, uh, at different places we want to have the air quality measurement, but at uh, you know other places you can calculate the air quality or ambient air concentration. So, for calculating ambient air concentration uh, through some air quality model we need emissions. Okay. Emissions are the input values for air quality models like dispersion models etcetera. So, basically we need to develop inventory of emissions we need to estimate calculate emissions from different sources. For example, you want to know uh, you know uh, uh, what is the effect of uh, some thermal power plant at a particular place. So, background uh, air quality is there and that air quality is because of those background uh, sources of air pollution that may be from industries, from domestic transportation sector or some other plants etcetera. Right? So, you estimate emissions of all those activities right and then you sum up them. So, that is the total emission in that location when additional source you wants to install then you have to add that also. Then you calculate the air quality concentration ambient air concentration by running a model. Okay. So, those emissions can change as per the land use and land planning that is why the emission inventories are developed very periodically <coughs> after some years because technology changes. So, emissions also change. So, emission inventory is a dynamic process it is not that you have developed once one emission inventory and it will go for years. You have to 
you know incorporate the changes which have been in uh, you know some technology or policy related issues, land use related issues that influence the total emissions at a particular place. So, that is why we say that emission inventories is one of the fundamental components of total air quality management to measure changes over time to achieve the cleaner air. Okay. So, you can see in this figure also air quality monitoring is the basic thing, then emission inventory has to be there, so that you can use the air quality model and control strategies depending upon you know what is the air quality concentration as per different scenarios and you can achieve the clean air by changing those emissions which you get uh, figures from emission inventory. When uh, you know uh, like you want to define what is the emission inventory uh, related to a given sector or activity. So, you can say that the emission inventory of a given region for a specific time period like for a uh, per hour or per day or per season or per year is a comprehensive stock of all the pollution emitting sources. For example, vehicles, industries, power plants, road dust, construction dust, okay, construction activities related uh, dust emissions, residential emissions, uh, diesel generators okay, and then uh, biomass burning, waste burning, all those you know from hotels, commercial activities, from every source you get the emissions, you sum up, you develop the emission inventory and uh, then you use that emission inventory for this air quality modeling. And that emission inventory is a you, you know it can be uh, like per unit of time like uh, total emissions of this uh, gigagram per year, but you want to have you know grid based emission inventory which we will see why it is important for air quality modeling. So, the role of emission inventory in air quality management is uh, you know depicted by this particular figure where you can see the modeling. Uh, you know is related to inventory. Otherwise, you know there are so many activities like quantification of actual emissions, environmental impact assessment, okay, development of policies to prevent and control emissions, all those things are interrelated because emission inventory gives uh, you know input values to the modeling and modeling gives you certain concentrations of ambient air <coughs> in pollutants in the ambient air. And then when you uh, have the time series of those emissions and air quality uh, related uh, values or ambient air concentrations, then you can learn that a particular pollutant is increasing or decreasing. And if it is increasing, what is the reason? If it is decreasing, what kind of changes we have incorporated in our technology or fuel or some other activity, so that the reduction is there. So, those you know impact of policies can also be evaluated, assessed by these kind of activities. So, the utilization of an emission inventory is manifold like it can be used for planning of policy or decision making because you want to change. Uh, for example, like in Delhi you want to change this uh, public transport system to a particular fuel right like CNG it was implemented. So, how much gain will be there in reduction of particulate matter? So, these emission inventories help in these kind of estimations. If you want to change complete uh, you know those uh, road vehicles to uh, electric vehicles, then what will be the emissions of those non exhaust emissions right like from road dust or uh, from tires etcetera only those emissions what will be the changes or you can reduce the exhaust emissions because of change in uh, particular emission inventory as per the policy and programs. Development of pollution control strategies. So, as I said whatever control strategy you apply it will uh, reduce emissions. So, those emission inventories will be as per the control strategies okay? two stroke engine it is converted to four stroke engine. So, emission will change. So, accordingly emission inventory will uh, uh, you know take uh, these kind of changes into uh, this and this spreadsheet modeling or other complex modeling can also be there for emission inventory because emission inventory is also developed by certain models. Okay. It is not only simple calculation, but sometimes it needs lot of uh, sophistication also. Possible reduction measures and the air quality modeling or future projections you want to have according to the uh, you know targets or quantitative analysis of emissions whether it is decreasing, increasing, its impact on air quality, then its impact on health risk all those uh, you know things can be uh, related to the emission inventory. So, the utilization of emission inventory is manifold right. 
then uh, you know it also helps in like uh, promoting better understanding of the actual emissions without uh, you know if if we don't have the real figures the actual values okay we can't uh, really judge whether uh, you know the impact is more or less for example earlier people used to say that the transport sector is the sole responsible for uh, you know the poor air quality in delhi but later on when you know emission inventories were developed and it was found that uh, you know pollutant wise uh, different sectors have different significance so particulate matters were uh, very much released by power plants so those kind of you know when you have some uh, uh, perception but that perception can be changed when you have the actual values although emission uh, inventory development is also a, an estimation kind of thing you can never reach the actual or absolute value you have just estimation based on you know certain data and then it also raises the awareness of both policy makers and general public because for a particular city let us say you are having the emission inventory for different sectors so with that sector you will be able to judge which sector is responsible for a particular pollutants increase or decrease if you know uh, like pm10 you want to target and pm10 is coming from a particular activity a and in comparison to the activity b so better you target the a to reduce the pm10 okay then similarly there are other modeling efforts for secondary aerosol generation so that is also important that what are the precursors which are resulting in secondary aerosols so can we reduce those precursors so those kind of things are also important and the you know this quantitative understanding of actual emissions through emission inventory help us to get that major emission sources can be identified as i just said about uh, that a and b priorities for emission reduction can be defined by that emission inventory because it will give you an information that okay this is the sector this is the activity which is emitting the maximum emission of a particular pollutant so better target that otherwise you will have certain amount of money and if you distribute for each sector okay you improve but the improvement in air quality will not be visible because we are not tackling that particular sector which is predominantly responsible for a particular pollutants emissions and the emission inventory helps us to understand that uh, the you know uh, comparison of different sources well <coughs> so uh, you know the modeling activities okay the emission data you know allocated geographically and temporally means especially and with the respect to time it can help or it can be used as input data for atmospheric transport models okay and atmospheric dispersion models also the resulting air concentration will be important for air quality management decision making because uh, you know emissions will increase de decrease accordingly the air quality will vary the ambient air concentration will vary and uh, then we can uh, see which uh, is more important and which is least important as per their concentrations whether they are exceeding the ambient air concentration standards or not right then it can also be used for assessing the health impacts because once you know the air uh, concentrations you can convert it into the health impacts also by using certain equations by using certain models well uh, the future projections and setting of the targets are also very important activity like you estimate the future emissions for example uh, you can say after 10 years what will the emission of this particular city so you you look at what kind of activities will increase or decrease accordingly different scenarios you will create and based on those scenarios you can make the projections and you can analyze whether certain pollutants will increase or decrease accordingly you can look at uh, uh, the policies and programs uh, depending upon the projections so the future emissions which can provide important information for setting up some emission targets for example let us say uh, because of this electric vehicles uh, a particular pollutant like nox emissions reduce then it's good okay so that means uh, uh, you know other sectors we can concentrate upon for other pollutants rather than uh, you know nox or so and uh, it can also influence like ozone production is being influenced by it or not those modeling techniques can also give us additional information by uh, you know incorporating those kind of uh, gases or precursors well when we consider the possible reduction measures then also it is important because the prevention and control measures how will you know that whether it is working or not again emission inventories because emission inventories will uh, incorporate those uh, changes 
those control measures. For example, power plants, uh, if uh, you are having uh, let us say this uh, ESP to control emissions. So, what is the efficiency of that ESP? Accordingly, you know the emissions will be changed and your emission inventory will change. So, the cost effective emission reduction measures can also be assessed by emission inventories, because you can put different technologies and see what is the emission. And accordingly, when you compare, you choose the best technology which, give, which gives the least emissions. Right? When we plan some policy and measures and we want to follow up them their impact, again these emission inventories help us to uh, rely upon the decision making process, because it will give the data and accordingly we can judge whether that policy is effective or not. Well, uh, you know when we talk about air quality modeling, we need you know gridded emissions, because we can calculate emissions as a single value, but we have to divide it according to the activities. In a city also different pockets can have different emissions, in you know industrial areas they will have different kind of emissions, where roads are there then you know you, you will have more CO or NOx emissions, okay, where power plants are nearer you will have different kind of emissions. So, the gridded emissions are divided according to the activity data. So, the chemical simulation you know in most of the atmospheric uh, you know chemical models requires surface emissions in gridded form like these kind of grid is square 1 by 1 kilometer 2 by 2 kilometer depending upon how much data you have. Those gridded emission inventory provides locational information of the emissions of different types of air pollutants and their sources and using a dispersion model. Uh, and local meteorological conditions, we can convert those emissions into ambient air concentrations, right. So, that will give us uh, you know the real situation in which particular location of the city, which kind of pollutant will be more. Okay? So, according to uh, you know we can uh, suggest some changes in the behavior of the people also. Suppose, you know according to the meteorological data and the emission, you find that uh, uh, on a certain you know uh, sunshine is good and uh, ozone production may be higher in a particular location. So, you can always warn that okay, the old people and those people who are having some health issues, they should not visit that particular location, where according to your modeling the ozone uh, you know concentration may increase because of some precursors. Right? So, the emission inventory development approaches also uh, are different like bottom up approach or top down approach. So, in bottom up approach basically we go for detailed activity data. So, it is very uh, you know data intensive you can say extensive data set we need. For example, let us say we want to uh, you know develop emission inventory for a transportation sector. So, from bottom up approach you need uh, you know detailed uh, uh, like values of how many vehicles are there within those vehicles, how many four wheeler, how many two wheeler, within two wheeler, how many two stroke, how many four stroke, within four wheeler, how many are driven by diesel or gasoline that is petrol or CNG, those kind of things. Okay. As much data you have, as much you can, okay, that will help to develop more realistic emission inventory. That is the bottom up approach, so that you survey, you get the data, primary data, you use them and develop the emission inventory, that will be more realistic. Top down approach means uh, by surrogate parameters like for example, for a city you know how much diesel was sold. Okay? So, then there are some thumb rules that okay, this much of diesel burning in uh, you know <coughs> transport sector, this much of emission is occurring of a particular pollutant, then you distribute. So, that top down approach may be there or satellite data you have and you have some uh, air quality concentration in a column, you want to distribute it for other activities. So, those inverse modeling can be done. So, those are the things that top down approaches are uh, uh, sometimes coarser and it is not as detailed as the bottom up approach, but for you know uh, like preliminary decision making top down approach can be quicker. Okay? Those kind of things are there to differentiate between the two. Well, so the pollutants in invest, uh, this emission inventory we consider depend upon what is the use of the emission inventory. So, if you want to know, you want to uh, run a model to see the acid rain effect, then acidifying pollutants you can develop emission inventory, okay? NOx, SOx, etc. If you want to uh, see the health impacts, etc., of particulate matter, CO, etc., then you can have these toxic pollutants, right? 
then heavy metals related emission inventory you can develop, you can develop persistent organics related emission inventory or greenhouse gas related emission inventory. So, it can vary depending upon what is the use, what is the problem we want to solve. If you want to have the emission inventory of all pollutant, you can have it and depending upon how many resources, how much resources you have. Because whatever activity you will do, you will uh, require a lot of resources, trained people, then uh, you know for survey, for collection of data, lot of you know resources are needed. So, uh, there are limitations also, you cannot go for every kind of thing unless you have a lot of resources for that particular activity. Then when we talk about basic equation of the emission estimation that is very simple like emission is nothing but the emission factor into activity data. Like emission factor means for example, uh, for vehicular uh, emission inventory you want to know uh, when uh, a scooter is running 1 kilometer how much emission of CO is coming. Okay? So, the emission gram per kilometer, milligram per kilometer depending upon different pollutants and for uh, you know power plants etcetera you can have like uh, coal is burning. So, 1 kg coal burning how much uh, you know emission is there. So, per unit of uh, weight or mass you can have the emission factors. So, depending upon the activity emission factors you can have and then the total activity data you multiply means for vehicles how many kilometers per day it will run. So, you can multiply that uh, distance traveled for coal burning plant how much you know coal will be burnt in a day. So, for that uh, you know daily emission inventory or annual emission inventory depending upon you can multiply those figures and get the emission data. And these are the activity data as you know like transport. So, in transport uh, you know vehicle categories as I said fuel types and the quantity all those things are there. Well, <coughs> power plants what kind of technology it is being used whether it is a gas based power plant or coal based power plant then um, waste burning. So, quantity per capita again different cities have different values for that middle class, lower class they have different kind of lifestyle. So, different uh, amount of waste is generated, different type of waste is generated right. Then my biomedical waste from hospitals etcetera labs right and then diesel generated. So, you just imagine the activity you can just add this is just a you know representative uh, of these activities, but you can add whatever you want and the activity data can be uh, extended in that way. Well, the emission factor as I said it is nothing but an average uh, representative value that attempts to relate the quantity of air pollutant released uh, in the atmosphere from a particular activity. So, it can be per kilometer driven of a vehicle or per kg of the coal burnt something like that right. And the types of emission inventories can be like annual average or seasonal in, in inventories or the forecast or future emissions related emission inventories gridded or modeled emission inventories, greenhouse gas emission inventories, you name the purpose and the pollutant or the region accordingly the emission inventory can also vary. When we talk about annual average emission inventory, so this is one example for like US greenhouse gas emissions uh, this economic pro by economic sector from 1990 to 2018 you can see the variation. So, when you have the yearly emission inventory you have different values. So, it also gives the trend. Okay. So, this transportation trend you can see in 2010-2015 it is reducing. Okay. So, you can see what is the reason whether it is you know the uh, fuel efficiency is better in those new vehicles okay, or the population is shifting from particular kind of vehicle to other public transportation system or the technology is better okay, those kind of things you can always look into. And economic sectors could be like transportation, electric power industry, industry, agriculture. So, different years, different activity and according to different emissions. But when you have the time series of emissions, you can always come uh, to this kind of insight that some uh, pollutants are increasing or decreasing and why they are increasing or decreasing. And if they are decreasing then uh, you know that kind of technology we can further uh, you know use or extend. And if it is increasing then we have to make certain changes. So, that uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, pollution does not increase constantly. Like seasonal emission inventory you can see here if we compare like spring season, summer season, okay, autumn and winter. So, here also like seasonal variation is uh, uh, visible. So, contribution rate for, uh, for this PM 2.5 uh, is shown in this particular uh, you know, figure and the secondary sulphate contribution rate 
is the highest in autumn you can see 24 percent around and the vehicle exhaust is highest in summer. So, according to season which particular activity is more responsible for a particular pollutant uh, up to what extent right. Then the road dust and the building cement uh, dust have a relatively high contribution in spring and summer which 2 to 4 percent higher than the winter. So, those kind of uh, you know insights or uh, inferences you can always draw uh, from such kind of uh, figures which are based on uh, seasonal emission inventory or temporal emission inventory. When you talk about forecasted or future projections of emission inventory, so you will have this kind of data for different years like from 2010 to 2030. Okay, so, projections are there for future. So, here reduction due to reduced coal consumption in SO2 emissions is visible. So, those kind of policies are coming up that we, we are shifting from away from the coal utilization, then the SO2 emissions are sh being shown as decreasing trend. In uh, you know this uh, NOx emissions uh, 2010 to 2015 you know little bit decrease, but then again it is increasing. Okay. So, what is the reason for that? We have to see. Right. So, different uh, you know you can see this is uh, like uh, power plant or road transport or uh, those kind of thing you can see the road transport emissions are increasing, exhaust emissions are increasing. So, that is that may be the responsible if that particular policy is being followed may be it is not uh, considering that, uh, those electric vehicle kind of thing right. PM 10 emissions are also like uh, these are being increase, uh, in increasing trend. So, this is for Kolkata city basically one uh, sample study you can see. So, that the emission inventories uh, base year is 2010 and the projections are for 2015 and 2030. So, accordingly the trends can be analyzed and you can link those trends with the particular regions and you can address those regions if you uh, need. Well, gridded emission inventory is important as I said because uh, you know different kind of uh, models need gridded emission inventories to pick from uh, like uh, for a country or for a city whatever you are uh, taking. So, the data collection like base map, base map or point locations attribute data then digital data generation scanning of the maps and uh, geo referencing digitization of the map and uh, computing attribute data those kind of things you have to consider and then the mapping and modeling. So, mapping point locations generating grids and grid overlay and then you allocate the emissions for different grids. So, that is the way to develop the emission inventory in a gridded form. Okay. You can have total emission, but if you want to distribute in different grids, then you have to follow this kind of procedure. Well, uh, there are different agencies which have provided certain guidelines or manuals because emission inventory development, if you want to have uniform policy measures and uh, suppose you are asking different countries to pool their emission uh, in a at a particular uh, uh, you know agency, then you have to provide them some guidelines. Otherwise, people will have different kind of methodologies and you never know that uh, how much uncertainty is there in that emission inventory which they are submitting. So, guidelines and manuals of emission inventories have been prescribed by different agencies like European Monitoring and Evaluation Program. It gives uh, you know this atmospheric emission inventory guidebook. Similarly, IPCC Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. So, for greenhouse gas related emission inventories uh, which uh, they invite from different countries, uh, member countries. So, the guidelines are given there. Okay, those particular emission factors they have to use according to the activity. Right? Then UNDP United Nations Development Program. So, this gives Department of Economic and Social Affairs Manual. Similarly, the Global Atmospheric Pollution Forum Air Pollutant Emission Inventory Manual is there. Okay. And if we uh, look at those guidelines, so like for example, EMAP like European Monitoring Evaluation Program that gives manuals for uh, these particular uh, pollutants like SO2, NOx, NMVOC that is non-methane VOC, VOC is volatile organic compounds, then methane or ammonia and CO. Okay. And it is applied for reporting the national inventory under the convention on long range transboundary air pollution. So, that is particular uh, you know program accord and under that program when different countries member countries uh, submit the emission inventory. So, this particular guideline or manual they have to follow. Similarly, uh, you know in IPCC as I said the member countries have to follow uh, 
the uh, you know uh, to submit to UNFCC as per the guidelines which have been prescribed by IPCC. That happens in case of UNDP also which have different uh, manual for these SOCs, NOCs, NMVOCs, CU, etc. So, you know uh, every agency has a set of pollutants for that they need emission inventories and for that they give the uh, this guidelines. Okay. Now, here you can see this UNEC reporting guidelines for emission inventories. So, the principles are given. So, as a representative thing uh, just we want to give you an introduction what are the scopes like each party must report on emissions for the base year and every year is starting with the year of entry into force. So, these are the guidelines they have to follow religiously. Methods is also given and the reporting way is also given. Okay. The numbers within the bracket indicate corresponding paragraph in the uh, you know that particular guideline. So, it is a exhaustive guideline and uh, on the basis uh, on the basis of that guideline people develop uh, emission inventory different departments are there in each country they are responsible for submitting those emission inventories. So, now if you want to see different kind of emission inventories which are available in Asia and the world. So, there are several names like range gains. So, this is database which is developed by International Institute for Applied System Analysis which is in uh, you know Austria to estimate emissions of air pollutants including greenhouse gases. Similarly, Edgar is there, Edgar database is developed by National Institute for Public Health and the Environment uh, to estimate emissions of air pollutants and greenhouse gases. Similarly, GIA is there, LTP, Access, RIS, E agreed. So, different kind of set of pollutants have been uh, considered in these emission inventories and uh, you know worldwide uh, these uh, emission inventories are used by researchers and uh, lot of uh, efforts are made to uh, revise these emission inventories so that latest emissions are available for researchers. The pollutants targeted by different inventories are different. You can see like UNFCC related uh, <coughs> like SOX, SO2, NOX, VOCs, etc. are there, but ammonia is not considered in this. Black carbon, organic carbon, PM10, mercury is also not considered by this UNFCC. It has CO2, methane, N2, etc. Rains gains, it has back, uh, back, this black carbon, organic carbon, PM10. So, you can see in this uh, you know particular uh, table and chart, uh, different emission inventories have different strengths in terms of particular pollutants. Okay. Now, if we talk about characteristics of inventories, so basically like uh, how much area they are covering. So, UNFCC related uh, you know those emission inventories are global. So, the for all countries they are providing emission values. Range gains is also global and then LTP like China, Japan, Korea. So, they are uh, country specific okay. and then excess is covering South Asia that means, uh, this India, uh, okay, Sri Lanka. Uh, Bhutan, all those countries within the South Asia and Southeast Asia and East Asia, these are the countries access inventory considering. And what are the base years, what are the categories anthropogenic or natural emissions are also being considered. Then uh, the spatial resolution, the country wide or uh, the 1 degree by 1 degree, okay, that, that kind of thing is there. Then uh, temporal resolution, whether it is annual or uh, you know some seasonal those kind of things are there. So, you can see here every emission inventory has certain characteristics. So, accordingly the usage are also defined. Well, the emission inventory framework developed by CPCB Central Pollution Control Board of India is given here. So, you can see like earlier emission inventory experiences uh, based on those uh, you know like identification of uh, the concerned sources those sources can be point source or the line source or the area source and then the secondary data and primary site survey data which are available from uh, you know secondary data may be available from the published literature or reports that is also available. Then we collect you know all activity levels, sources and location data for each source type right. And then the emission uh, this inventorization of identified sources uh, of as we discussed point line like that. Then quality control check should be there, data handling and uh, you know this uh, statistical analysis must be there because uncertainty analysis is a very important component otherwise maybe the estimations are uh, you know way away from much away from the realistic values. Then the source wise emission inventories and source profiles, scenario analysis different kind of scenarios. Then we have 
this GIS mapping the grid based okay, the, uh, based uh, you know emission inventory we can develop. So, this is the basic framework which has been recommended by central pollution control board. So, that different uh, you know pollution control boards or state uh, pollution control boards and agencies they can follow this particular um, uh, framework. Then the if you talk about major sectors of emission inventory, so again this is just uh, you know a kind of uh, sample for transport, agriculture burning, domestic activities, industries power, diesel generated, but you can also add like for construction activities okay, or the waste burning, you can just add whatever activity you want to include in the emission inventory. So, these are just sample activities and accordingly you know those sectors we will discuss later on. When we compare you know emission inventories for Delhi, uh, then uh, you know like uh, seasonal or area which area is there NCT Delhi, year of uh, you know total PM 10, then the Gutikunda 2018 uh, emission inventory, Safar emission inventory 2018, Terry uh, developed 2018. So, these are three emission inventories. You can see variation okay, PM 10 like Terry related only 67. Uh, you know the kiloton per year and this giving uh, 238 and this is 268. So, they are near but there is lot of difference here. So, what kind of sources they have considered we have to see then the total PM 2.5 emissions also it gives uh, different values and uh, IIT Kanpur related uh, values are 52.344 PM 10, CPCB 2010 uh, uh, you know published uh, this 2007 area, uh, year for they have 64 uh, you know this kiloton per year. So, accordingly uh, because there are changes uh, 1 by 1 kilometer or 400 for 100 meter square meter or 4 by 4 kilometer 2 by 2 kilometer according to you know different kind of uh, grid size, different kind of activities, different kind of emission factors the values may differ for each inventory. So, uh, it is not necessary that uh, uh, one inventory is good and one other uh, is bad, it depends on several factors which have been uh, considered to develop the emission inventory. Well, when we talk about sector wise contributions to PM 10, okay, so uh, you know when we compare emission inventories for PM 10 in Delhi, you can see here okay, different values for different sectors are there, right? like uh, here this industries are up to uh, this kind of percentage. But uh, for uh, road dust is given is given uh, much more uh, for, for this inventory, and uh, in Terry it is not given so much uh, you know share. Rather in Terry uh, in my emission inventory the construction activity is having uh, quite good uh, uh, you know share. So maybe they have not considered that particular activity. So we have to see which parameters they have considered for developing the emission inventory that is why the variation may be there. Similarly, the estimated values also vary like sector wise variation in the emission inventory of PM 10 you can see here. So, for transport you know 5 percent to 20 percent variation can be there and uh, you know like DG sets it is quite less. So, estimations are quite closer, but for road dust a lot of variation 35 percent to uh, like 65 percent. So, it means lot of uncertainties are there. So, we have to look into uh, the methodology, methodology, the emission factors they have used and uh, the season and all the variation uh, va variable factors which are uh, used for calculation purpose. Then we will be able to know why this variation is there. Plus at the same time these kind of variations also gives an indication that lot of uncertainties are there and we have to reduce those uncertainties so that the variation reduces and we come to some uh, you know kind of actual value, but uh, you know this is a kind of dynamic uh, process and every time some uh, you know new changes are there the new emission inventory we have to develop. So, we have to go for this way. So, ultimately we can conclude that the emission inventory is a prerequisite for chemical transport modeling or dispersion modeling to calculate ambient air concentrations and the extensive data sets are required in collecting the activity data and emission uh, factors for estimating the emissions in uh, this bottom up approach you can say. And the emission inventory you know always tends to outdate due to increasing urbanization or population. Therefore, it is necessary to regularly update the emission inventory otherwise if we are using the old emission inventory and we are uh, you know estimating air quality concentrations by using those old emission inventories then our 
you know those uh, modeled uh, concentrations will not be uh, uh, as per uh, the uh, you know the reality it will be uh, erroneous kind of uh, estimation then the gridded emission inventory will uh, you know substantially improve the spatial and temporal allocation of emissions and that way uh, you know the those air quality models dispersion models will also give better estimations for uh, ambient air concentrations so this is all for today as an introduction uh, to show you the importance of emission inventory now you know next time we will see uh, what are the different sectors and how do we estimate uh, the emission inventory for that particular sector so this is all uh, for today and the reference list is there for additional information thank you for your kind attention see you again in the next lecture thanks again